Visit Lex proudly presents an ABR Films presentation. Kentucky's horse economy has been measured at $4 billion. The state boasts two historic venues, each offering horse racing fans a unique and spectacular sports and entertainment experience. Located in the heart of Kentucky's famed bluegrass region, Keeneland is unique in that it is both an iconic thoroughbred racetrack and one of the world's leading auction companies. Up the road to the west in Louisville sits Churchill Downs, home of the world-famous Kentucky Derby. Driving Kentucky's economy right behind the successful thoroughbred industry has been the global emergence of Kentucky bourbon. Today, there are nearly 5.7 million barrels of bourbon aging in Kentucky. That's more than the state's population. Whiskey, which translates to water of life, comes in many types and from such places as Scotland and Ireland to Canada and the United States. While whiskies range from scotch, Irish, single malt, and from blend to grain to rye to bourbon, it's important to note that while all bourbon is whiskey, not all whiskey is bourbon. To be considered a bourbon, a whiskey must adhere to a specific set of legal requirements. It must be made in the United States, aged in new, charred, white oak barrels, must be made of at least 51% corn, distilled at 160 proof or less, and barreled at 125 proof or less. And lastly, there can be no artificial coloring or flavor additive beyond water. If those rules aren't met, then it simply ain't bourbon. The kicker is when you see straight on your bottle of bourbon, that tells you that it's been sitting around for at least two years. And that's when it takes it up to the next level. The perpetual exploration for answers to century-old questions commences with the marriage between wood and whiskey. Part of the taste profile of a good bourbon this is the grain that we talked about earlier, and the steels, and the cookers, and the fermenters, and the yeast, and the water. I said, but the other half that's even more important is the barrel. There are 30 to 33 staves in the making of a barrel, and they randomly reach and pick up those pieces of wood. So theoretically, you could have 33 different trees in the making of one barrel. Charred white oak barrel wood equally affects bourbon's maturation as well as its flavor. A white oak tree is to bourbon, what a grapevine is to wine, what peat is to scotch. It's where your oak tree grows for the 70 to 100 years before you cut it to make a barrel out of it. The roots are busy picking up flavors from whatever grows around the base of that tree. So the soil, the clay, decomposing foliage and vegetation are all factors in the taste profile that you will extract from that white oak, depending upon how you've charred your barrel, and what kind of warehouse you put it into. When aged and warmed inside of a barrel, magical things can happen. The activation of the alcohol and water molecules caused some of the sleeping bourbon to evaporate through the grain of the wood. This lost bourbon is affectionately referred to as the angel's share. The story of bourbon is one of history, innovativeness, 
and a pioneering spirit that defines America. Offering the natural perfect mix of vast deposits of limestone and a favorable climate, Kentucky proved ideally conducive to producing bourbon and champion racehorses. What makes Kentucky kind of unique is we sit on top of a fault in the Earth's crust. And believe it or not, millions of years ago, those plates actually buckled. And the force of the shift was so great, it pushed this white marble limestone that you hear so much about from way beneath the Earth up to the surface. In doing so, it blocked the Kentucky River from its original course. And the Kentucky River became one of only four major rivers in the world that flows north instead of south. So when the springs feed water into this limestone, actually the pH factor of the water is entirely different than anywhere else in the country. And when you take your unique yeast strain and mix it with mash made from water in your area, here in Kentucky, it creates a unique taste profile to your bourbon. The rest, as they say, is a legacy. on the final episode of America's Native Spirit. The fascination of bourbon and horses is explored.